everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 106. Holy crud, has it been a while? Yeah. All right, I'm your host as always, Nathaniel Rumpeljans, joined to my left and your right by... Eric Moore. And man, oh man, I need to apologize, um, primarily to our patrons more than our other viewers, since they are the ones that made this podcast a weekly show and we haven't been weekly for the past two weeks. We've been actually pretty good in 2019. Yeah. Uh, 2018, we had some blips here and there. But we never really missed two in a row. It was always just one. Um, but I have just not been feeling well. Um, some of you guys already know this. Um, you know, Plus, Eric, incredibly busy. That's just life. Uh, but in general, it was mostly my, my fault that it didn't happen. Uh, just too tired and worn out and sick. And I had food poisoning for a little bit there. Uh, that I suffered through, and it's just, things weren't lining up, but the nice thing is, I'm mostly good now, although I think today I came down with a cold, so, <laughs> yeah, course. it's one thing after another, but see, it's day one of the cold, so it's yeah. not that bad yet, Yeah, yeah. but by this time next week, hopefully it's over, but knowing me, I mean, my daughter's first communion is coming up, so I'm going to be, yeah, right, I'm going to be just wrecked that day, I don't know how Probably. I'm going to get through it, but, um, this is also a, a sweet episode to come back on because we are on our road to E3. <laughs> Eric's been secretly counting down the days for like two months. Just a, just a, just a little bit. <laughs> um, I, it, it, how many days away are we now? I don't actually know. It um, is less it's, than it 30. It is less than 30. It, it is, is less, less than 30. 30. Technically, what are we like? At, at the time of recording, 25? at the time of recording, it is like 30 days away from like June 11th. But. We're not leaving on June 11th. Obviously, we're the getting the heck out of here. We fly out on the 6th uh, to go to E3 because everything really starts with EA Play yes. on the weekend. and then Which uh, we still need to register for. Yes, just they, they actually just put the registration. It, okay, yet, perfect. So we're, we're fine. Um, the EA Play stuff and then uh, Nintendo's Smash Bros. and Splatoon tournament as well uh, that weekend. So we got to get down there for the weekend. Uh, even though we're not planning to attend the Smash and Splatoon tournament, uh, because Microsoft is running their major press conference on Sunday, so of course they're. Well, that's yeah. you know we're doing EA Play on Saturday. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I figured that. I mean, it's probably only FIFA, anyways, for for Nintendo. Yeah, but. probably like it was last year. Yeah, and we'll just be able to get even better footage, footage. <laughs> that we're yeah. not supposed to have. Yeah. Uh, unless they kick us out. <laughs> we're well, teamwork. Hey. At least look at it this way. We got the footage. We got the footage. We destroy my phone. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> it's an automatic. Make sure I turn automatic cloud backups on. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Anyways, I really don't care if I get kicked out of EA Play. It's okay. Right. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we fly out on the 6th. Our, our trip might begin on the 5th, kind of in the afternoon, because um, we, we're probably going to be at a hotel. Uh, cause our flight is like six in the morning or six, seven 30. I thought it was, I don't know. I think it's we fly out at seven 30 ish. It's early. So yeah. we're just going to drive over to the city, spend the night, park the car and yeah. roll water thing. Yeah. We still got to wake up early anyways. Right. Right. But at least we can, we don't know, have to little, leave a have little have to, more sleeping. We don't have to do an hour and a half drive. We don't have to leave here at like two 30. And it's not even an hour and a half drive. Cause it's an hour and a half drive. Then you got to go to the, the place to park your car and then yep. they go park your car. See, we'll already have that done. We yeah. just wake up, grab our stuff. Well, no, our we'll probably, what we'll probably have to do is, well, no, what we'll probably have to do is, is that morning we'll go park the car i'm pretty sure we go park the car when we go check in maybe i don't know guaranteed because it's all it's a one package thing yeah so yeah. guaranteed just park and just shuttle yeah. it right in the way in the morning yeah um anyways we'll figure it all out i'm not really that worried about it um but man it's gonna be the earliest we've ever been in la yeah yeah definitely so yeah we had to la uh early this year man yeah what like i, I don't we we did a we did arrive what on saturday last time I think so, yeah. Yeah, because we, I think we arrived on Saturday. No, I think we're, we're we had Friday. One, we had one day of EA play that we could go to, but I didn't go because of the press conferences on Sunday. Okay, yeah, so we must. So have. I think we arrived on Saturday. Yep, yep. Because that's it. Then we got our badges and yep. all that, which took a little bit. Yep. And then by the time we were all settled, we couldn't really do EA play that day. Right. Um. And you know, you know what really sucks is that last year there was a press conference. We could have gone to the EA press conference this year if there was one. Yeah. Got the connects. Yeah. But there's not an EA press conference, so we don't get to go to it. Not that I'm saying Come I necessarily in. want to be there. Come in. And I'd probably live stream it anyways. Yeah. But who knows? If Eric wanted to get the press conference experience in person, do would have been like, sweet, go get your free swag and 
sit back and enjoy. You mean Why like not? like I do walking around EA play? play yeah, that's I don't know. I never. To be fair, I don't know. I didn't go last year, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they, like, they mean handle you, free swag. Yeah, you, I came back with two posters and uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, I remember. And a uh, couple of copies of a uh, couple of free copies of Madden. Yeah, old the old yeah Madden. the old versions of it, but I mean. Still, I mean, it, whatever. Theoretically, it's still something. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, Sunglasses, tote bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's a swag fest. Yeah. Plus, did they have things you could buy in there too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah of course they do. Uh, so, anyways, uh, yeah, man. Like this is the earliest we ever left one because I wanted to make sure we both went to EA Play this year and got like our full day there. Uh, two because um, I know on Sunday the press conferences start, and three. I want a day of rest before the big, <laughs> before because like we... literally every time we've gone, it's hit the ground running right away. Yeah. Uh, the first year that we went back in 2016, oh, God, that was, that was rough. That was, we arrived on Monday, but it was like Monday. And oh, it was probably on Tuesday by the time we actually got in at like 1 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. And literally Tuesday is when E3 begins, like, and we got hardly any sleep and just slammed it for like three days and got the hell out. Yeah. And granted, that's the cheapest way to do it. Yeah. But it's also, it killed me. So we said, no, not doing that this time. Well, then we forgot about EA Play. No. <laughs> we I thought we were I don't know if we, we I don't know no, if we no, really we, we thought we were fine. forgot about EA Play. I don't no, think we ever no. really thought we, about we EA Play. We didn't register for EA Play until we got there. I oh no, I know. But I like I said I don't know if we actually no. forgot about EA Play. It was we didn't know necessarily think about it at no, all. I don't uh, we didn't even know about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we didn't forget no, about it. I forgot because I knew initially oh. and then I forgot. Oh. I didn't forget because I never knew. Oh, well, <laughs> You're all of a sudden like, well, it's just this. Oh. Never oh, there's that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, well, sure. Because you know, so, I'm, I'm like, oh, we'll, we'll get there on the weekend instead yeah. of like on Monday, right? We'll give ourselves a day of rest. Or yeah. that's what I figured. Yeah, right? that's, that's what we're on Saturday yeah. and then even Sunday, even if I stream press conferences. Right, it's not that. It's like half the day is yeah. still a day of rest. Go swim right. in the pool. Go, you know. Oh, go the chill. pool of healing. <laughs> oh, the pool of healing. Oh, God, oh that, that, nice. pool, that pool had magical powers, man. I'm telling you, it did. I I have never had my knee pain. Go away it, in anything I've ever been in, but that damn pool. It, that uh, pool had real massive, massive magical powers. It, I mean, besides healing, it, it, I mean, I talked to an attractive girl there too. I mean, that that pool had magical powers. I don't, sure. Put it this way: not just that you talked to her, she wanted to talk to you. Yeah, that's right? the magic. Actually, well, powers. it was more she started the conversation she too. Did. So that's crazy. She, she did. That's yeah. what, I, what, what have I been telling you all these years? You got to find a way to be like me and make the girls come to you. Yeah. If yeah. you go after them, I don't have, yeah, any, yeah. I have zero success at <laughs> yeah. that. But yeah. them coming after me, God, yeah. I'm like six for six. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, setting all that aside, uh, we will actually have a day of rest because there isn't a press well, conference on Friday. I mean, besides the fact that we get there at like well, we'll 10 like a.m., 11 well, a.m. at Thursday. I still Thursday. don't count the first day we arrive as a day of rest. Right. Because you get, still pick up press badges. Yeah. Or our car, our, our badges, car, check into the hotel. Sure, we'll have a little more time. Than you, like, we're not going to be like, oh, we'll get that all done and it's now, you know, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Yeah. It'll be more like 3. You know, by, by the time we actually, we can't, probably can't check in until 3. So we'll probably yeah. have to bum around for a little bit after the badge and get some yeah. lunch and then check in. Yeah. Um, but either way, then we get, uh, you know, then, then we're checked in and I'll have everything set up by mm-hmm. like 5 p.m. And then we can actually relax. Yeah, right. Go swim. Yeah. Maybe actually watch a movie there instead of just having it on in the background while what? I'm working. Like actually <laughs> get to, well, you got to watch. I didn't get to watch. Yeah, crap. I'm gonna watch a Dumb and Dumber. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I love Dumb and Dumber, but I can't watch. Got to work. Um, yeah, but yeah, so it'll it'll be nice. And then Friday, oh, because there's no press conference. Do get, that is like my relax day. Like I'm, I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna do anything in particular. I know I'm going to the beach. Okay. I actually right. want to go to the right. beach and actually right. enjoy it for more than 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Not saying I'd be there no, all day. Yeah, like, yeah, half sure. hour, for hour. Sure. Like, And yeah. not just because it's someone lost a bet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't uh, remind me. Buddy special. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, you mean the, the, the Eric Eric, Eric loses. losing special. Yeah. It's coming up. Can't do ocean water this time. No. Something else. I don't oh, know. I know. What. i got to figure out another punishment. I don't know what. Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to throw it's punishment hard because you, you have it. You have an iron stomach, so it's if hard wanna, for me to think about food right, punishment. Right, right. If you want to throw out punishment ideas, I guess comments. Yeah, I mean, he's fantastic. referencing our betting special. We do a betting special every E3. 
uh, and he's lost every single one of them. But the thing is, he's barely losing them. Like they are coming down to like the last question. This yeah. last one, this last one, you know, the, the second to the last, and then I got, and then it didn't matter what happened to the last one. Yeah. But still, like for it to come down to that, it's like every time it's like down to the wire. Um, and yeah, I don't know how we're going to do the betting specialist things. I haven't even thought about it yet, but we'll figure it out. Last time we, last year we had a patron do it, um, read the questions and yep. all that stuff. So we'll see what happens this yeah. time. Um, it'll maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll actually have the patrons come up with all the questions for it this time. That might be yeah. Kind of yeah. Um, cause then we don't know and I can't like rig it towards stuff that maybe I know that Eric doesn't know or anything. And they know he's got time to research stuff too. Yeah. Um, so we'll see about that. All right, let's get into our actual topics for this first week of our road to E3. We got some juicy ones. Um, the first topic, oh boy. Um, Nintendo has unveiled their plans for E3. I'm um, surprised, surprised. It's pretty much the same as they do every year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who knew? How original. June 11th at 9 p.m. Uh, it's not CT, it's, uh, PT at, at 9, at 9 yes. a.m. I wrote 9 p.m. I don't know. I, <laughs> I know what time it's at. It's you at 9 are. A, 9 a.m. PT. Um, they are doing a Nintendo Direct, and they are calling it a Nintendo Direct. So not a digital Holy cow. Or anything. They're actually just going to say, hey, it's a Nintendo Direct. Well, yeah, it's always been a Nintendo Direct. You just kind of called it something else. An yeah. E3 digital of that. Like, it's Whoa. a Nintendo Direct. Um, so the first E3 under Shintura Furukawa and we are getting a Nintendo Direct at E3. So there you go. No there you go. no details on how long it is or anything yet. Uh, they may not give us any details on that. You presume it's at least a half hour, maybe 45. We'll see. Um, usually it's the longest uh, Direct of the year. Last year was like 20 minutes of Smash and then 15 minutes of other stuff. But Yeah. Um, yeah. This is uh, going to be interesting because they, they mentioned, uh, they say this every year, by the way, but it's going to be 2019 titles only. Now we're caveat they say this every year and then they still show off titles for the next year so <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything so a lot of people really don't expect it they're tempering your expectations yeah but they do it every year so it, it literally means nothing it means you are primarily going to see 2019 games and i think that's a given yeah i mean think about super mario maker 2 comes out later that month yep you know marvel ultimate alliance we, we've got um oh geez luigi's mansion animal crossing I mean that just just yeah. stopping right there. Then yeah. you have Pokemon Sword and Shield. I yep. I mean the list goes on and on and on. Town for crying out loud oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's still slated have for twenty nineteen. It's still slated for twenty nineteen. Yeah, we haven't seen anything, but, it, but yeah. Uh, maybe like, maybe E three playable. Like it's just it, it, nice. Damon X Machina. You know, yeah. It's just the list goes on. Like there's so many games. So yeah, we're gonna see all those games. I get, I bet we'll see them practically all of them. If we don't see Animal Crossing, then I'll be scared because that'll be a. Uh, it's probably delayed. Yeah, but um we're gonna see everything they have coming this year for sure and then they'll tease probably at least one or two things for next year that's my guess now that's what's happening um at 9 a.m uh i will be live streaming it because again we have gamer passes this year which means we can't actually get in so we'll sh- basically i stream it we, we chit chat a little bit after it's done and then eric and i leave and go get in the line to the public line to get in um or eat and then get in. I can't remember what we did last year. We had we yeah. had kind of plenty of time, but I, I do want to be more towards the front. One thing we do have to sign up for, and this is something I forgot to put on here, um, is they re- they replaced the Smash Pass that we could sign up for last year okay. with Warp Pipe. Warp Pipe. Uh, um, okay. The way they describe Warp Pipe is basically the Smash Pass where you go and you sign up and you play a game or, uh, without like waiting in line. You have like a set time, mm-hmm. uh, which as we learned, it really isn't a set time. It's a time when you can get in line to play and you're in a VIP line. Yeah. So basically they cut yeah. off everyone else and you get your yeah. own yeah, yeah. things to play on. That's what it was with Smash Pass. Maybe it will be different this year and they'll actually do the set times and you'll actually play at your set time. I don't know. Right. Um, but they made it sound like you, you'll be able to use the Warp Pipe Pass to play multiple games. That okay. has me very interested. Now, the fact it's called Warp Pipe, I think is that's. I think fast it's fast track. I think, no, well, no, no, no. It's Mario. Yeah. So it, oh. I think it's. I think their theme this year, the theme last year was Smash. The theme right. this year is going to be Mario Maker Two. Yeah. I just. I just have a feeling it's Mario Maker yeah. Two. Um, is there any other Mario games coming out? Not that we're aware of. Okay. At the moment, so maybe there could be some I mean, new one announced, another announced, and then. Um, all I know couple. is. It's called the Warpipe Pass, and they made it sound like multiple games you'll be able to use with it. So that'll be nice. What's nice about what was nice about the Smash thing is we got Smash done right away. When yeah, we were done. Um, so it'll be nice to see what we can skip lines for. 
I'm really hoping that Pokemon Sword and Shield are part of it. The only problem is, is Cause, a lot of times you can't cop footage of that, which... I don't care. I know. No, it's great for reactions and, and well, hands impressions. On, well, hands-on yeah. impressions. For sure. And no, no, there was only Let's Go they wouldn't let us get footage. We don't, just, know, we don't know about this. Yeah. We don't know about... They might let us get footage of Sword and Shield. I don't know. And if they don't... Let's just be honest. There's so the way much. that everything is displayed, you can still you can sneak, see, oh you God. sneak getting footage you, you, of other people. You stand point. 30 feet Grant, back no, and you, you can have, zoom you in. Have, well, if I can get my camera in, I can definitely stand 30 feet back and zoom yeah. in and get really good footage. Yeah. I can just pretend. I'll, I'll just have, all I got to do, especially if I get the tripod. So I'll just stand off to the side in. a little bit yeah. and just zoom yeah, past be, my be, head. I'll be like, hey, you just act like you're talking into this fake mic. Yeah. And I'm just going to actually be zooming in and recording. Right. <laughs> Anyways. Right. right. And the thing is, Nintendo doesn't actually strike anyone for doing it. They just, it, it's weird. I, I don't, I, again, the thing to remember about Pokemon, though, is it's not Nintendo's Nintendo. rules. Right. It's the Pokemon company's rules. Yep. They don't want people getting footage of it for some reason. That's what the way they were with Let's Go. I assume they'd be less way with this one. Who knows? I think they're going to have more demos this time around. So they might so. not be as restrictive so. this time. Yeah. We'll see. I, we don't know. We're not there. But it, um, whatever. You guys saw I got like a minute or so footage up anyways before they yelled at me. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really too worried about it. Besides, you just have to kind of, oh, I'm just getting the whole I'm just getting the whole yeah, thing. Right. Oh, oh, uh, stop, stop for a second and, and then uh, just keep going and come, come back. back. And just and, splice it all together yeah, in the end and it yeah. all looks good. All right. Um, anyways, there, there's some trickery you could do to get around some of the restrictions. And some, for some reason, they don't get mad at you for it. So, um We'll see what happens. Well, the thing is, with a media pass, I don't, I don't. Who knows? Because then you get in before everyone the mm-hmm. first two days, and then maybe the rules are a little different for just media. But uh, we don't know because we haven't had media pass since they started putting the restrictions on. Po- well, we've never. We're at E three with a Pokemon. Our first E three yeah. was Zelda only. So. Yes. Um. All right. So that is is an interesting thing. Um. On the eighth and ninth, we mentioned before they got the Splatoon two. And Super Smash Bros. tournaments, their conclusion of the tournaments they've been running kind of all year. Um, so teams from, I think it's the U.S., or I should say North America, to, um, and then Europe. Um, I, I'm I'm, so, I'm forgetting something. Australia, and there was a combination of two other countries, France and something. I don't know. Anyways, um, that, that that's happening, uh, and that's going to be really fun. Uh, they were really entertaining last year. I remember I didn't I didn't live stream them the last time. Who knows? Maybe yeah. the thing is I won't be streaming anything on the Saturday. Guaranteed. Gruden A play. Priority is for us is games that you guys can't play that we can go hands on with. Get yeah. hands on impressions and footage. That yeah. is the most important part of this entire trip, in my opinion, because you guys can watch the live the same live stream that I could be reacting to at home. You can't play the game, so I want to. That that's our focus. So. Yeah. Um, so it for seemed, sure, it seemed to do well, well for see. us. Maybe to... on Sunday, if things fit between press conferences or before press conferences, maybe I'll stream react if I'm just chilling at the hotel all day, which I did last Sunday. So I'll probably end up doing it, doing it again this Sunday. I mean, basically, I spend a lot of time at the hotel because I'm always editing and doing stuff. Um, but that's what so that's what being early. I get yeah. out of the hotel on Friday, yeah, yeah. and enjoy some of L A. I mean, you'll get. You'll get out of the hotel on Saturday. Just no Hollywood sign tours. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, not worth it. <laughs> not worth it. I, I don't even care about seeing it anyway. I can see it from a distance. I'm good. Yeah, but um, you probably still see it. From a distance. Yeah, yeah. You don't get very <laughs> yeah. close to it. It's it's obnoxiously. All right. Um, but now uh, besides that, they're gonna have the Nintendo Treehouse live, of course, all three days. Again, same thing every single year. Um, what is cool, uh, is they did say. Nintendo Switch software only. So, 3DS, you are finally dead. Well, maybe. I'm No, it is. Oh. They officially announced at the last financial meeting that they have zero new titles in the works for 3DS. Holy cow, wait. Oh, I suppose because of the new That's Switch. them. They said there'll be new third-party titles. So, that means if Nintendo's done, it's done. So They Switch, are done. Switch Mini's coming out then. Well, <laughs> they did also note it would be software only shown. So I think they're trying to squash any expectation of hardware. Again, can you believe it? Yeah, I don't know. No one knows. Yeah. But if you take Nintendo's word, no Switch Pro, no Switch Mini, none of the, no new hardware revisions being shown. Um, that's what they're saying, so that's what we got to go with. Yeah. Uh, so that doesn't mean they can't show up before E3 because then it wouldn't be a new showing of it. They could just have it at E3 but not talk about it since they already showed it. Yeah. Or they can show it later, or they could not have it at all, and they can have no revisions coming. Um, so they, but they the fact that they say software only lets you know that wait a second why would you have to know it's software only if there isn't new hardware? 
So Nintendo's kind of like, I, oh, hey. Uh, I mean, I, hint. Hint, hint. <laughs> like, hey, we have something to talk about. We, we, we have a little dangle, morsel. Dangle. Yeah, we have a little morsel to talk about, but you know what? Not at E3. No. Not at E3. Let's, we'll let Xbox. So why would we do that? We're, we're, we're too buddy buddy with Xbox. So they're having their hardware stuff. We're uh, going to let yeah. them dominate. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. They're going to dominate with the hardware stuff and the hype. And we're just going to bring the games. We're just going to game you up. We're going to hit you and beat you over the head with games and shove them so far up your rear end <sighs> that they're coming out your esophagus. Yeah. I yeah, around your ears. I don't yeah, know. Whatever. Why not? Whatever. Why your not? holes are higher up, I yeah. guess, in your body. So yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out your eyes. Coming out your eyes. Um, why not? So yeah, that's that's their schedule. That's what's happening with Nintendo. Um, now, as always, to note to people, um, that's just Nintendo. <laughs> there yeah. are a whole bunch of other press conferences happening that could have games that are going to be on Switch. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed, Just Dance is going to be on Switch again, and they'll they'll have a thing like that at the Ubisoft press conference as um, always. I'm wondering if they're going to have another stage. Um, it could be you know Bethesda planning the show off Doom. We know that, and that's we know that's coming to Switch. So. Um, there's a lot of other stuff to pay attention to at E3, and we'll be talking about that as we continue down our road to E3. But it's only appropriate that the first week on our road to E3, we just mentioned the Nintendo stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's really all we're going to do is yeah. mention. Just go over the schedule and kind of move on, because uh, in future weeks we'll be talking about more specifics, expectations, um, pr- predictions, and, leaks and all that stuff. That leaks that end up happening, rumors. Because, you know, that's just what, that's that just generally just tends to what happens. But there is one thing we're going to talk about, one game that we're pretty certain is going to be there, especially now, because our second topic, what is it about, Eric? Oh, that would be Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 first preview is out. Yes, the Black Order, I think it was GameSpot or Game Informer, I can't remember. Informer. What? It was a Game Informer, yes. yeah. Okay, they got, they, got, they got to be basically the debut of actual gameplay. They got, what, seven minutes of real gameplay, um, and... Throughout it, they're just explaining how the game works. And Eric, I've, <laughs> Eric's face me. That's how these. That's I, how, I, I, like, I yeah, know. I like. I, Got to be a little lead. They're just explaining how the game works. It, you know, it's the just third because one. you know. It's the third one. But the second I, one was I, I a long it. time ago. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and this is Switch exclusive. You know how many people have never played it who are probably a lot. Yeah, I know. But it know was your just audience, like, oh, my, Eric. I, I I get that. I mean, I understood what they were doing, but at the same point, I was like. Is they're like it can do you can do this? I'm like so Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna let you kind of leave this topic because you've actually played the games and I've never had. It. So how did the gameplay look in this? Gameplay looked almost identical to the old stuff. Um, if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. Go back play the old stuff. Um, Ultimate Alliance, Ultimate Alliance Two, um, Ultimate Alliance Two isn't. In my opinion, it isn't quite as it's, good as it's one. It's not just your opinion. It literally has like a fifty rating. On yeah, it, it's not. It's not terrible. They took out a lot of the RPG elements that made one fantastic. Okay, what kind of RPG elements are we talking? Um, basically, you know, you could choose different moves, and you can level up those moves, and you know, power ups and everything like that. Okay, so and then they cut down massively on the list of stuff that you can get, and it actually kind of sounds like well it sounds like e- each character one. has four abilities which which i guess is because there's four button four face buttons right i guess but I get there's it, but there was a list of like a good i don't know how many it was that that well it sounds like that is something they kept from two is a li- more limited abilities like mm-hmm. you only have the four each character has the four but they did say other things too though like there's some that there was like talent trees and stuff where you could gain different types of weapons that might not change your abilities, but change right. your attacks. Right, right, yep. And, but that was that was that's what been part of the other things as well. Was um, that in two? Yep, as well. Uh, jewelry, stuff like that, just been trinkets, trophies, stuff like that. Um, that gave you different power ups to certain certain characters, certain uh, certain not necessarily certain characters. Sorry, um, certain like abilities, certain traits of your character, um. And how that works in flow, and you know, you find your best f- fit of your trinkets for each character, and, and and try to build it up that way as well. Um. So yeah, I mean, that's it's a n- normal gameplay for Ultimate Alliance. Um, gameplay looks ex- like a multi Ultimate Alliance gameplay, um, which like is I said, v- a very notable too, by the way, because this is made by a completely different studio. Yeah, it's got the completely same feel. Completely different studio. Um, so to even so. get that feel, I think is important when it's a completely different team working on it. The one, the one thing I did 
hear them say that I was kind of disappointed in is you can't grab and throw enemies anymore. That was always fun to just go grab a hold well, of the guy. I was wondering if throw him off the edge. And I, I was wondering what gameplay difference. I bet you there's probably other middle minute things like that because this is being made by Team Ninja, and uh, that like they've never made a game like this, mm-hmm. like in this style before. Um, and as I'm watch, I was watching the gameplay, and and I kept thinking, you know what, this reminds me of a lot. Dynasty Warriors. Mm-hmm. It literally, like, you switch between characters. You can have, like, I think they said three or four at once. Four like at once, three, yep. Yeah, whatever it is. It's, it's four total. You're one of them. Yeah. yeah. So you so have three other, three others, whether it's friends yeah. or and you could do that, AI characters. And you could or, do that in the Warrior games. You can mm-hmm. switch between different characters, and they're always super powerful compared to the enemies. Um, and so I'm watching. I'm like, this just feels like a Warriors game. It, it kind of is. So is... In a way, how it, it is. How, okay, how does it differ? Because... The way that, that people look at Warrior Games, hack and slash, mm-hmm. basically really easy. Um, there's hardly any challenge, and every level basically feels the same a lot of the times in Warrior Games. Yeah, no, that's where this kind of differs a little bit. Um, the levels don't feel the same. It is a lot of hack and slash. There are parts that can be hard, but it depends on how leveled your character's at and where you're at in the game. It. Some things can be super easy. Some things can be relative, not hard per se, but not like you know. Oh my god, I'm just walking through these like. Well, it looked like they were doing that in the trail, yeah, yeah. or in their footage. Look, yeah. like they were just destroying right everything. And that might, and that was a lot. But a lot of the, a lot of their gameplay was early. early well, yeah, that that footage. is notable because so. they're. It sounds like they're going to have like a whole preview leading all the way up to E3. It sounds like, uh, no, like next week. Next no, week they were all, a, It was character profiles. Character profile. Yeah, next week. Yep. But that's just next week. What are the, what's that? I don't know. What the, I don't know. Like no, because the, uh, it wasn't just next week. It was like a. I think they said twelve or fourteen. Well, yeah, character profiles. It's, it's so however it's, many characters yeah. that they're allowed to show up. Yeah. Because well, for those who don't know, they probably have a review copy of the game, mm-hmm. um, or something, and got rights to have the first preview, kind of like IGN first. Like they got the rights for the first preview. Uh, and so they're allowed to show certain things along the way. Like they were allowed to show gameplay up to a certain point and talk about how the game works. And on, then next week they'll be allowed to do character profiles. And after that they'll be allowed to show maybe a little bit more. Or after that, you know, it, it just kind of goes mm-hmm. on and on until they you hit E three and then they just blow you out. Um, so that's and and I don't mind them doing it for something like this. Um, I think a lot of people would think you know when these kind of previews come out this early and you know there's going to be a lot of E three about it. People worry that, oh, no, there's going to be too much information out there. But I think in a game like this, I mean, what did we learn? We learned the base premise for the story. Yep. Which, surprise, it's based around the Affinity, Affinity Stones. Who knew? In the, in the an Black MC, Order. An the, MCU yeah. universe game built around the Black Order and, 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 and the Infinity Stones? Yeah. Man, I couldn't have told you that one. The, <laughs> right. game, the Black Order right. is literally in the title of it. Yeah. And the Infinity Stones are like some of the biggest things in all of That's Marvel. That's happening so, right now, yeah. Like yeah, that's definitely. not really a surprise. No. None of the characters are really that surprising. I like I remember um, when they initially showed it off. Someone said, "Wait, Wolverine?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's actually their X Men are all Marvel Universe. Yeah. It's just been in cinema. It's just been owned by different companies. So like they couldn't they can't, really they can't, exist together. Yeah. Technically, they will be able to soon. Yeah, since Disney bought out the company. Well, right, bought right. out the company. Right. So. One thing I I, I did want to ask is how what's the character selection look like compared to what you played? There's a handful of you were talking about Wolverine and yeah he Wolverine's been in all of the all of them. Uh, there's a handful of it's a spattered around thing. They had generally have groups which again is in this game as well. Um, so like the Avengers, the first Avengers, the it, there's a Spider Man group. There's a um, women of the MCU apparently um, in this one that one's new uh, I think F- from my I don't remember that one in that one in the old ones but um, but as for character selection I mean th- you, obviously all of your your Avengers Cap Thor uh, Hulk Iron Man have been in all of them yeah um, okay I, w- I I wanted to I was asking about that because <laughs> the Avengers is weird. Because ones that I didn't actually see though were the Fantastic Four. Yeah, well, That's, there's that. Well, I didn't see any of those. Well, so. I almost feel like this is building heavily. Like, the, has the series always kind of like built heavily off of the cinematic universe a bit? 
Because mm-hmm. the big thing to remember is before Iron Man came out, the movie, mm-hmm. he wasn't like a huge character of Marvel. Right. Nor was Captain America. Like these are nor- known properties, but these weren't the popular mm-hmm. characters at Marvel. No. Well, the first. Spider Man f- was always like the biggest. The first one, if I remember right, there was a ton of Norse stuff. So Thor. Um, and then they went into. Um, like Neptune and um, so a lot of Norse stuff. That was that was like the first one. So um, that's kind of that that storyline that that one. Okay. Second one, I don't remember a whole lot of the story because they wasn't dumb good, the story it, it down a quite a bit. Too. Um, um, so yeah. So it was it, you know this story. I I don't. Know, it could be good. I it well, looks it looks okay. Well, here's the thing. Um, like like the story, you know, is. Based on the Affinity Stones, which we just got wrapped up in the cinematic right. universe, um, it's you know them being spread all over the universe and trying to get them before the bad guys again, mm. exactly, pretty much like what happened in the recent MCU stuff, and then it's got all of like everything they've shown is basically main stays from the normal right. MCU. Like, it starts off with Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. which I'm not going to spoil anything with Endgame, but if you've seen Endgame, you'll know that why that's interesting that it starts with the Guardians of the Galaxy crew. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, going to the Avengers, which, again, became big with the MCU. And, and the yep. thing is, I know these characters have always been big long before there was a cinematic right. universe, but right. some of these characters that, like, headline these games, I'm kind of like, but these weren't the big characters before the right. movie started coming Um out. So if I remember kind of timeline-wise, I think the first one actually came out before a lot of the movies, I think. Well, the only movie that might have been out back then was Iron Man. Right. And then the second one, or so Captain the first America one maybe, wasn't I'm really sure. based a whole lot on like the movies. And I think the second one was based a lot more on... On like well, the it makes Avengers a lot of sense. I, I think some people feel. Oh, here's here's a question for you. Do you think it was a mistake for Marvel Ultimate Alliance three not to release in the same month as Endgame? I a lot of people yeah, think that with yeah, the Endgame hype, possible. like right after that movie, some people are like, "Oh, what's next? Oh, hey, there's a new game." Yeah, it could have been run along right alongside of it. It that might I mean, have been. Granted, a you release idea. the game when it's ready. It's right, fine, but, right. But it's it, a lot of people think, felt uh, that I talked to anyway thought maybe this was a lost opportunity for the game. I like, can see how that I could especially since see it's that, exclusive though. and never been on Nintendo. So like right, no, I could definitely see how that could be a missed opportunity. I I think the game is hopefully going to be good enough, and it, it's still I don't know. Do we have a release date for it? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it's um, the summer. Okay, so uh, maybe maybe we're still going to be writing the tail end of the. Of the end game hype, Marvel. Um, so maybe that's kind of uh, how that they're planning that. So well, it, it's not just the the one thing to remember the, the end game of end game hype. No, <laughs> the, the the one thing to remember is the end of phase three um, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe isn't technically end game. It's Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man Far From Home. So it could release around there. Yeah, it comes out July nineteenth. Okay. So that that is that is very close to Spider Man. So right, it technically has a chance to build off of the Spider Man. Re- yeah, you the you the quote unquote real ending of Phase Three, even though Endgame right. was kind of the ending of everything that had been built up to that point with the Infinity Stones. This right. is obviously, I think this is a this is the end that's going to help set up the future. Mm-hmm. Is what I think is happening with mm-hmm. Home. Um, because there is still Phase Four, and, and like the, guys, the Marvel Cinematic Universe isn't done. Okay. Yeah. Like Endgame wasn't the end of the, the end of that round. The end of the the Affinity Stones. Maybe, I don't know if it'll be the end of them forever. Yeah. And I, I I'm trying to think back to the comics. I don't think the Affinity Stones were ever gone forever, even when they were destroyed. But um, yeah, well, nothing how, nothing in comics is ever nothing gone in forever. comics is ever gone forever. Yeah. So, um, anyways, uh, it looks honestly, it looks good. I'm hoping it's it brings back a lot of the flavor from one. I'm a little tentative that it's not going to, which kind of stings. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Yeah. So it hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. <sighs> you know, it's 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 one of those things that you just can't get. You want to get overhyped for, 
but you probably shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, looks first first impressions looks good. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at with that. Okay. Um, what what did you think on it? Besides, I mean, yes, I know you said you felt a little bit Dynasty Warriors, but, well, but you're right. It is. I'm okay with it feeling that way because I enjoyed like Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors. So, um, I'm not like a big Dynasty Warriors fan, but any like universe of characters I enjoy, and I I love Marvel, so um, I'll definitely give it a shot and try it out. Uh, and we'll see where it goes from there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, what I thought was interesting is they said the best, because you could play like couch multiplayer with it, mm-hmm. uh, but they said the best way to play is for everyone to have their own Switch and their own copy of the game, which obviously mm-hmm. gets expensive. Local, local wi- Because uh, local, wireless. Lo- local wireless play, you could have four people playing together and you all have your own screen, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, well, if you have if you have enough people to do that. Four friends with Switches. Um, yeah. Or but three friends with Switches. Like, like, we'll probably... I oh, don't yeah. know if you're gonna have it. I'm gonna buy oh, the game. So <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm gonna buy it. Okay, game. so so we'll we'll be able to do that and, and test it. Who knows? Maybe that'll be a game we end up reviewing that month, or I end yeah. up reviewing, um, and then I could test out single player plus yeah. playing playing with someone locally, uh, and then doing it also through the wireless play. But um, it's gonna be interesting, and I I honestly um, every time I watch it, it's just like okay, like this feels like MCU. This feels like MCU, yeah, and I love MCU, so I'm in it. I know. I was, I was curious just because I know you haven't actually played it. No, any I have not played so. any of the prior ones. And I think the way they have this set up is it's almost like they know that a lot of people playing this and might have never played the prior ones. Mm-hmm. So the story feels like you, you probably didn't need to play the prior ones. No, no. It, it, I, the second one didn't tie into the story of the first one. I don't if I don't if I remember correctly, it didn't tie in at all. If it had a story so, at all, <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I remember. S- I remember it not being very let's just, as, let's as just, good as the first. Let's one. Let's just hope that this is good. The first one's story was phenomenal, and you learned quite a bit about the MCU. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll have to ha- have hopes. It sounds like um, they kept some of the maybe I don't want to call it dumbed down, but maybe casualized to make it more accessible. I I don't know. I didn't play the prior ones, but well, I, I, honestly, until we play it and go hands on. It's hard to really pass any sort of verdict right. based on seven minutes of, right. of gameplay with other people trying to tell us how it works. Right. Um, so it'll be a, it'll be very interesting, and obviously, you know that that is one one game impression video that Eric's definitely gonna have to get on, get in on uh, after E three for impressions because he is I way more of a veteran for this franchise than I am. So. In fact, I'm not a veteran at all. So it'll be interesting. You get the perspective yeah. of someone who's never played versus someone who has a lot. And of normally, it's the opposite way around. Yeah, normally, <laughs> that's why I said it's going to be really interesting. Because Eric's basically going to be leading it because he knows everything, and yeah. I know nothing from what I can remember. Anyways, well, yeah. you know way more than yeah. nothing. Yeah. So. All right. Um, next topic is actually interesting. Um, it kind of sounds like the ESA is in trouble. Uh, for those who don't know, the ESA is the group that runs uh, E3. Uh, they also run the ESRB, those so are, the ratings yep. board. Um, those are the two big things they're known for. But they're basically the uh, the Electronic Software Association um, handles uh, trying to represent video game companies and gamers in general uh, in the court system and the legal system and do a lot of lobbying and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, try not to get video games banned because they're violent, violence, yeah. all, all that stuff. That was kind of like the big thing back in the '90s and early 2000s, yep. but that's less of a concern these days, obviously. Well, but uh, there's other starting concerns. to come back. No, the concerns now seem to be around gambling and loot boxes. That's the big legal right. Fight right. But now. I mean, there is still um, the the violent video games make yeah, violent people no, claims. Uh, there uh, are it, still those. The, but enough scientific research has come out that. I don't think it's going to happen in the U.S. Anyways, it, 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 other places right. have actually like put restrictions in place, but yeah. the U.S. has been kind of we're, we're good. Which I mean, come on, have you seen the movies that, that are like come on, we're, like literally. Yeah, we're, no, I'm, no. I'm I'm pumped for yeah. the next Game of Thrones episode that's going to yeah. have a z- way more violent way more violence than any video game I've right. probably ever played. So right. um, that being said, uh, I'm they have a lot of stuff going on. There was an article um, put up by Variety. And uh, Variety did a lot of research on this. I guess they've been gathering this information for quite some time before they went to publication, which, by the way, is the best type of investigative journalism, in my opinion. Um, gather your sources and make sure you know what you're talking about. Um, so I'm going to, uh, in the final version of this, of this podcast, put a link to it down in the description for you to check out the full article. Um, but I'm just, I just got some bullet points, things to go here. Um, so through a whole bunch of internal polling uh, that they discovered at the ESA, 
Uh, they, the ESA is well aware that there is a lack of public trust in video games. Um, and I think we've always known that. Uh, I think big name media sometimes has a lot to say with that because they don't portray gaming very well, no. even today, yeah. unless it's something... To be fair, Nintendo often gets portrayed pretty well, but um, a lot of a lot of the gaming world is not portrayed that well. Like even even as Fortnite's become a sensation, there's also like all these stories about Fortnite addiction, and so like, well, yeah, people get addicted to everything. Yeah, right. And so, anyways, um, and then it says uh, E3 uh, actually makes up um, about half of all of the revenue the ESA makes for the whole year. It's crazy. Forty eight percent. What's interesting too is we found out that the ESA. Um, <laughs> the ESA files as a nonprofit. I didn't know that. A lot of companies file as nonprofits, by the way. So this probably isn't shocking, um, because I guess they're a, uh, I, I guess you they're like sort of a public service company since they're representing gamers and game companies. But mm-hmm. um, whatever. And I'll, I always find it weird when a company calls itself nonprofit when they make money. To be a nonprofit, I mean. It- I, I know the idea is you reinvest all your money back. I get that, but like even for-profit companies do that, so they don't have to pay they don't, as many taxes. They don't reinvest all of it. They take the profit out of it. Nonprofits are supposed to reinvest everything that comes out. Any profit yeah, yeah, is yeah, supposed no, to go back into the company. But a lot of American companies, I, I, Donald Trump would know it. this. You spend all the money that you make in profits. Yeah. Sometimes just in increasing your own salary. Yeah. So your right, company, right, so your right, company right, avoids right, taxes. Right. But anyways, um, it's actually a really smart business, to be fair, and I don't blame anyone for doing it because that's the way the American economy is set up. Anyways, that's not even over there. I don't really know the ins and outs of their nonprofit stature. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's interesting is um, there actually been internal conversations about splitting E3 away from the ESA. Who would run it? E3? Just well, I own. assume what would happen is the ESA would end up splitting it in half, and then there would just be the – because it makes up almost half the revenue. So yeah. half the company would just be – we just focus on E3, yeah, and the other half worries about everything else, um, which I don't know how that works in, in standing up for companies um, and all the legal fights because obviously when most of your money comes – but they obviously have other revenue because 52% comes from somewhere else. Right, right. So uh, – and E3, I'm sure, is hell of expensive for them. Um, and yep. Yes, I know that all the companies pay in and the gamer pass. I, I get it. They make money off it. That's the point, 48% of the revenue. But <laughs> I, I mean, for how expensive you think it is for them to host it? Oh, yeah. They're, I mean, they're making bank. And, and then to turn around and bank. make 48% of the revenue yeah. off of that? Yeah. Of, they're well, making beyond yeah. uh, bank. One three-day period in June, 48% of all yeah. revenue. Yeah. That is um, nuts. That is crazy. Well, I'm sh- you know, I, it, well, there's, there's was, other things yeah, that happen, anyways. too. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, but to get into the, the troubling part, right? So we talk about, you know, yeah, E3, they're talking about splitting it off. Is that really a troubling thing? Probably not uh, because they still have 52% of other revenue and, they, you know, whatever. They obviously probably don't need the E3 revenue necessarily. Now, this is where things start to get a little sticky. Half of the executives at the company have left or were fired over the past six months. Um, the mm-hmm. former president, Mike Gallagher, um, he left and or was like, forced to leave um seemingly because of his political stances um he is very right-leaning it's supposedly apparently a staunch republican um i i don't like how variety frame things about him just because i by the way i hate politics and gaming. oh yeah um so yeah he's very right-leaning and he had a sealed copy of a trump video game in his office and like apparently employees felt intimidated by that for some reason and it's like yeah he supported trump okay like he's a republican what do you expect Mm -hmm. so you're right so like I, i i try to like not care about this stuff but it is important because a vast majority of the video game industry is left leaning so he was running the company that represents all these companies legally when he doesn't agree with those companies. Mm-hmm. So that was always a big problem with the ESA and the rest of the industry is clashing right. in what they want politically versus what he wants politically. Cause this matters because the ESA lobbies politically. Right. Uh, so what happened is there was a lot of bills, I guess during the Obama era, and this is what led to him um, being forced to resign that would have benefited a bunch of video game companies, but he didn't really show support Push for, for it. it. And he wanted to just push for support. Not, not for that he, not that he didn't show support for it. He just didn't 
push for it. I think as he much as lobby. what he should. Yeah. He didn't lobby. Right. He, he didn't do what he was supposed to do. So then, from and, what and, like. and then when policies came in that he felt would have been beneficial to the gaming industry that the other gaming companies didn't want, he started lobbying for that. And then that's when he was starting to get asked. To get, and that was after Trump became president. So right. Um, it, Again, it, it gets a little political there, and I and I, I we're never going to know the ins and outs because we're just hearing one side of the story. Right. Uh, but it is obviously something I've known for a long time. I know the video game industry, gamers in general tend to be really left leaning. I know this. That doesn't mean there's not Republican gamers. And, right. Like, of course there are. Obviously. The, the point is that there was a clashing of ideals with a company that's supposed to represent gaming companies that felt like they weren't properly represented. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what led to that, and probably has led to all these staff well, turnover. But the problem seems to be, and, and this is why we're talking about it, is they're still talking about E3 splitting off because the big thing is, in spite of all the money they make from E3, they are consciously aware, based on Variety's inside sources, that the employees, a whole bunch of employees at ESA, know that E3 is actually failing. It's not failing mo- making money, but it's relevancy. E3... Right. Right. was the the trade right. show right and it still is considered the trade show mm, probably more by name than anything else maybe but yeah more by reputation yeah because think about it, sony's pulled out you know you think they ever first off sony ever pulling out and that doesn't mean sony won't come back right but still sony's not there microsoft sony, is its own sony place. thinks it could do better on its own microsoft is still there microsoft it, is in its own space there but but yes, they don't have to pay they're, the... they're a partner with the ESA, so they're still making money off. And granted, less because Microsoft's using their own space, but right. still. Yeah. They Microsoft Which, still wants to be associated with it. We need to get so. to that part of it too. Um this year. Uh so th- there's a lot to uh, so there's a lot of things with that. And and I guess the, the general feeling is they need to split E three away from the ESA so they could try to figure out how to fix E three. Mm-hmm. Because apparently all the ideas they have internally right now. Um, none of them have worked. You know, they, they've tried the, um, they tried letting the public in, um, and while they, <laughs> well, that's you. making them a lot of money. It's it has actually kind of pissed off a lot of them. Well, it's pissed off the media. Yeah. Although I, well, I think it's gotten better now that they did the, with the, the hours that media get early yeah, access. The, the, they extended the hours that media got early access for. Yeah, it used to only be like an hour. Now you get like yeah. two out, three hours the first day, two hours. So you get five hours before any right. public people are right. let in. You can get probably all everything you need to be you done. You get a good chunk of it. Or, or at least. It's just media. Like, they don't even let in the industry people. Like, the people that have industry passes, they don't even get in. They get in with the public. So, literally, media is given five unfettered hours of, we know you're in here just to cover this stuff, so mm-hmm. you're going to get good coverage. Right. Um, and right. that's why we love to get media passes. Hopefully, we'll have those next year. Yeah. Uh, so, it, it's... It, so I think that has I haven't seen too many complaints from the media now that ever since they did, did that last year right right um, or two years ago I think I can't remember what year they started it was it. well we the year we went, went we had was media the passes first year of was was the first year of public though we <coughs> had we had media but it was the first year of public yeah. it was twenty what twenty sixteen yeah and then I don't know if they made the change in twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen and, and, and the ESA tried other things too uh, before they ever did this public thing they tried having two events so then they tried having the private media event as always. And then they tried a separate public event that just bombed out after one. And the thing is, well, a lot of people felt do. a lot of people felt like it could have worked. Just how they did it was not the right way to do it. But the thing is, though, too, is is I can understand how two things won't work because it's are pretty, you really gonna have? It's pretty simple. They could have the the reason that it failed, in my opinion, is because it was two separate events during different time frames at different locations. Right. They should have just kept this one event, extended to five or six days. First three days are media yeah. only. Last two days are public. public. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was going to say. And that's Done. exactly what I was going to say. Was it? You know, if they didn't, how many people are going to pay twice to come back in a different? You know, in a, at a different time. You're already there. You're set up. You have to pay all of your employees for that. You have to pay for the floor space. You have to pay for this. Pay for that. Is it worth it to come back that second time? And I think that might have been where they they screwed up. If it's already done and and set up, yeah, I, th- I think it could have worked. Yeah. So it's I they need to to sort out how to keep themselves at the top. And I don't know how they're going to do it. Well, here's one way: you just make sure that your uh, your press conferences and anything that you provide for um, people to show videos and stuff and games off on actually work. Taking a shot at you, Pax. Um, 
with the uh, Borderlands uh, trailers. You, you know, that's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That you just don't do that. Borderlands and yeah. I felt a little bad for Gearbox because it, they. It wasn't, it wasn't their, their equipment. Right. It wasn't their fault. It yeah, wasn't it was, their equipment. Exactly. They, because the venue, but the guy the, running packs, said, we have the equipment. You don't need to worry about it. But the problem is, is that looks like, really... Randy's like, oh, we're going to bring in our own stuff. Now, there's a whole controversy with Randy Pitcher right. right now, too. Right, so right. we're not going to get into that. But, right. But that, um, but that, I mean, that looks really bad on Gearbox, even though it's not their equipment. Yeah. It just makes... Well, and you, he had rightfully was mad and should have been mad. Yeah. Um, because... But that's that's that's. I don't know how E3. they can't play. It. Like it's just a video. How can they not play yeah, right. Game? They're right. not rendering the game in real time. How can you not play a video? Use Cry it all out. You <laughs> plug your phone in. Use VLC. <laughs> plug, your, plug your phone in. Yeah, yeah. They were they were using like Windows, Windows Movie Player. In media player. I was, yeah. I was like, movie player. Yeah. VLC. Yeah. VLC. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Right, Anyways. Right, yeah. Um. That's so I guess this, this kind of goes right into the next topic, uh, which is how would we fix or change E3 if we could. <laughs> I, mean, I don't, I don't like, know. Like, well, well, first off, what do we think is wrong with E3? Why, why is Sony not there? I, why are there complaints every year? I, I don't know if it's necessarily what's wrong with E3 versus all of these other conferences starting to get a little bit bigger. They're starting to grow quite a bit more. I, 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 it, it's, that's my understanding of it, right? Like, PAX is, PAX is starting well, to get PAX is, big. PAX is huge, bigger than it's ever been. Right. So the growth of those is. So you think it's. Me? It, 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 do you think this is kind of like the way it's going with physical games, where you know maybe games that might be out of business in five years or whatever, like it's a, kind of this inevitable. There's nothing they can do. Not necessarily. I because I, everything else, everyone's realizing we can advertise games all year. We don't have to just do E3. We can do our own digital things. Like now we have State of Play from from Sony. Right. We, right, you know, Xbox Insider from from Xbox, you know, Nintendo Directs. Right, I don't. I'm not gonna say that E3 can't be saved, can't be you know re brought back to the glory of whatever. But part of me is wondering too if it's not a saturation issue too. We're getting oversaturated by, okay, this game show, or you know, this trade show, this trade show. Now we have this trade show, this trade show. You know, there's more of them popping up and starting to grow a little bit. Are we getting oversaturated with the I don't, trade shows? I mean, I don't think so because, like, like what what trade shows can you even think of right now? Oh, I mean, besides the other packs, but there's I, two I packs. There's three packs. Oh, okay, whatever. Three. East, West, and South. Okay, sure. I don't know why there's not a Midwest one. Come on, bring one to, well, bring one here, to Minneapolis. Come on, well, it, or it, Chicago. Come on. So I don't know. But here's the thing: yeah. all the packs are are pretty close to the same. Like when you see all the demos at it, they're like the demos are ready three. So they're still getting like secondary trickle down stuff. That doesn't mean there's not new announcements. It's all Borderlands, right? Like, yes, that happens, but that's not a norm I, right now. And after so, what happened, right, I'm it just, might not be coming. <laughs> right, right. And I'm I'm just kind of throwing ideas out here. What might be not necessarily, I don't know how to necessarily fix it, but what what is causing this to, quote unquote, fail slash diminish? Well, as an example, Nintendo didn't unveil Switch at E3. First time they never they didn't unveil the hardware at E3. Yeah. Um, Xbox One and PlayStation Four were shown off before E3. They had their own separate media mm-hmm. events. Uh, PlayStation Five is likely to not even like it might get unveiled this year, and E3 wasn't even part of any of it. Mm-hmm. Um, now it, it does appear Microsoft's going to use E3 for it, but that's because nobody else is. So why not? I think it, they, they, view, they, they view it as well. If no one else is going to do it, we're literally competing with no one, and we have right. millions of people watching. Why right. would we exactly? Not yeah, that's a smart it. business move. That's um, a really smart so business move. while Microsoft's going to be going the, the more traditional route, um, they, they didn't in the past with Xbox One, and um, I, I wonder if uh, that has a lot to do with it. Because I think yeah. a big thing about E three is the games, games, games. But it was always you never knew when that hardware reveal was coming. Right. You knew surprise hardware. Now it's like, well, now it could happen anytime. Mm-hmm. Any direct could could be it. Any right. any, any state of play. Any mm-hmm. you know PlayStation experience. Any PlayStation experience each year. You have the, you have the uh, game awards. You know. You, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know the hardware. I mean, God, if a hardware gets unveiled at the game awards, that would be wild. Um, that right. Jeff, that would Jeff Keeley. You are killing it if you get <laughs> hardware reveal. <laughs> right. Holy crud, are you killing right? it? If you, if you, right? Oh, Switch Pro show up, what? Yeah, wait, at what? The, yeah. At the Game Awards? Yeah, why not? Okay, yeah. Jeff Keighley. Yeah. Like, Reg, much, Reggie's, not even at Nintendo, Reggie's not even at Nintendo anymore, so don't matter how much you tug him, that's not how you made it work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah. I, I, I just, I, I here's the know. thing. Here, 
in general, I think the issue with E3 is more perception than reality. Yeah. Um, I think there is a perceived notion that E3 is less than what it is because of the press conferences. Um, you know, Nintendo doesn't do traditional press conference. They do a digital well, conference. Sony yeah. isn't going to be there at all in any, in any fashion. Um, EA is not doing a press conference this year. They're just doing their EA play thing. Um, and whatever. So, I, I think there's a perception issue more so than a reality issue because attendance seems to be doing just fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we, you say yeah, but like we're just talking about when we're there. Like they actually look at the final, like the actual numbers are they dipping or sinking or going yeah. up? Or, like they're actually kind of stable. So the attendance is fine. The halls are actually more full now than they were back in 2016. Yeah. Um, granted, a lot of it's just some you know, people selling stuff. But I don't know how much. It, I think that's still be- better than empty. I don't know how much it's going to be filled up this year with with Sony being gone because Sony was. Uh, I need those floor plans, man. The floor plans should be out here in about a week. Okay, so, that'd be nice to see. I'm, I'm be nice very to see. curious. I'm, I'm hoping Nintendo bought the extra. I think Nintendo's got enough games they could use the space. Oh god, I mean, at least, or at least half the space. Like literally, no, just Nintendo. You need a bigger just booth. Buy that whole hall. Just make <laughs> half. Just make the Sony booth the Pokemon stuff, and you'll be good. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I'm just telling you with how long, bad the lines were last year. Well, I mean, three hour wait. You had eight. Oh, it was had, four and a half. It was four yeah. and a half for me. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Well, for you. You, were there, you were there before me. I waited twice. I know. I don't know. Really we have to go that's back. Like, that's like an entire. Go back day. and watch the vlogs. I have my timer in there. No, it was bad. <laughs> um, so I think the problem with E3 is more perception than reality, and this is we. I've att- this will be my 33 attending. Um, there. To, I think what people forget is E3 is a trade show. Mm-hmm. It is not press conferences it press yeah. conferences have always been a big deal the esa has welcomed them um it's helped hype up the event and i think that's why people put so much uh, value on e3 is because you knew nintendo even now nintendo's doing it right you know microsoft's at a press conference you know bethesda you know square enix you know uh ubisoft like they're all still doing it so that's all still a big deal but that's not e3 Right. Those are press conferences. Right. E3 that just itself, coincide with E3, E3. It, itself is a three-day event where media and gamers that pay get access to actually play hundreds of games that are not out yet. Right. That is what this show is. That's what it's been. It's what it's always been. Right. So for me, looking on, I get being disappointed and let down at the press conference level, but the trade show level seems just as strong as ever. Mm-hmm. Just no Sony this year. That'll be the only weird thing. Yeah. But I, really again, weird. again, that doesn't mean Sony's never going to come back. Uh, it, it right. just you know they're going to try something new and see what happens. And if it doesn't work as well as being at E3, they'll be back at E3 next year. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of it is because I don't think Sony has a lot of games coming out this year, and they know it. Right. I think they know. I think they're Nintendo in 2016, where they know the next hardware's coming. They don't have a lot of games coming, and so Nintendo decided instead of leaving, we'll just hype people up for Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Whereas they're like, well, we're not going to just like hype people up for you know Death Stranding or or, or, or something for mm-hmm. the 20 billionth time. <laughs> it ain't coming to playstation 5 uh, so like they're just gonna wait till they're gonna wait till they're ready which will probably be by the end of this year or next year uh, yeah uh so honestly i'm i'm not i don't think e3 has a problem at the level of the trade the, show itself the trade show i think the trade show is healthy as hell um it's the press conferences and I don't think you can't force companies to do them. And the way Nintendo does it with a direct is the most financially responsible way to do it. Right. No no question for you. And more controlled. Controlled environments are huge. Right, right. right. Question for you. With in the past, before they started doing kind of these their own type of um press conferences and stuff, weren't most of that stuff done kind of in that same area, not necessarily at their own studios, like they they did it with in like not necessarily within the building, the the EA Convention Center or the uh, LA Convention Center. Yeah, but, it wasn't in the LA Convention Center, but like close by, like actually. Yeah, I was think it not not done like in a studio. It was in at a Nintendo. It was always or, in a theater, right? No, they don't. I don't think they do all those now at that the, the, like that same theater at 
a lot of them aren't going. Well, well live Microsoft does it at their theater, too. their own theater, obviously. But other other people have done it at the Microsoft one. I can't remember. There is a theater that's near mm-hmm. E three, near the convention center. That I think someone's done that. I, for some reason, I remember the Nokia theater be theater being used a lot. Okay, and that's down in Hollywood. And um, is, is and that's my question though is is it that a lot of these things are kind of going away from live live press co- press conferences because of the. I think for ESA, what they're worried about is just the stature of E3. Mm -hmm. And they know the stature of E3 is what it is, not just because of the trade show. The trade show is incredible, and we get a whole bunch of great stuff, but that hasn't changed. Right. What's changed is the press conferences. Right. And they know that because of that, the game announcements and the new game announcements, like the relevancy seems to be a lot in the announcements. And if you don't have the press conferences, you don't have the announcements. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of it aren't – but isn't a lot of these starting to go away from live – Press conferences and stuff like that aren't aren't a lot of the companies to away from that, uh, and not necessarily, not, f- you know what I'm saying, filmed live, but edited and ed- filmed like three, four, or five week early, edited and then shown that way. Yeah, if, like, if the, do, like the Nintendo Direct. Right, right, right. But not really, you know. No. Um, Microsoft's live, Ubisoft's live, like they're all, okay. all everyone's live. Okay. The Except only the, even even um. EA, who's not doing a live press conference, they're doing like a treehouse style thing, and they're going to just announce all their things through that. So even they're doing live over two days. Okay. So okay. Nintendo's the one doing pre-recorded. There has been one other studio that did, did one, um, Digital Evolver, I think, did a pre-recorded one mm-hmm. once. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're they're still they're a smaller one of the major companies. Nintendo was the only one who did the who did it, and they're still the only one who did. Okay. The pre-recorded. Okay. I yeah, I can never really yeah. fully. Know. I don't really well, know whether it's fair, live some, or. To be fair, for some companies, they've kind of got it figured out. Yeah. Ubisoft every single year just shows really well at E3. Yeah. Especially the last like five years, um, <laughs> they they always have some new IP that just blows people's minds, um, and. They've been killing it with Assassin's Creed lately, and even it's just like it feels like Ubi's the division, and and, mm-hmm. and Watch Dogs like they've just been kind of killing it. So they're they're kind of have a nice flow to their press conferences that seems to be working for them. Um, Bethesda has been like the king of the press conferences lately at E3. Like they just, I don't know why they just seem to always do well. It, it's always been like the Sony, uh, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo ones mm-hmm. that always seem to be the most embarrassing. Well, EA. <laughs> to be that's what EA does not doing it this year um yeah it's but, just embarrassment to begin but, with, but like like nintendo uh sony and microsoft have always been kind of like a crap sh- not like not even less than a crap shoot at e3 if it was gonna be good or not yeah like sony's well, live press conference last year was terrible they, i was gonna say didn't they, they had like, an intermission a 45 minute intermission yeah that's yeah not yeah no they had. They started off with like a fifteen-minute musical performance. Yeah. Showed you seven minutes or something of The Last of Us, mm-hmm. the next Last of Us, and then, boom, forty-five minute intermission to the point that the people that were trying to entertain you in the intermission ran out of things to talk about. Yeah. And kept yeah. reminding well, you, oh, we're being told it'll be ready soon. Uh, Twenty yeah. minutes later, oh, yeah. we're still being told it'll yeah, be ready. Right. It's like, well, that, that's because you had to move your whole entire crowd. Like it was a terrible thing. And then on top of that, it that wasn't bad enough for Sony, right? Like, I'm not saying they didn't have some games that look cool. Like, Ghost of Tsushima. Like, they had some really cool-looking stuff, but the pacing was off. The 45-minute intermission was longer than the totality that they actually showed games. <laughs> and on top of that, their live thing, they, their version of Treehouse Live, like, when we were on the show floor and I'm over there, like, watching it, on, on the because they had a huge yeah. screen area where you yep. could sit down and just kind of yep. watch it. And I'm like, this isn't very good. Mm-hmm. Like, they're they're, they're, the entertainers they weren't very entertaining. They don't know what they're doing. This no. is not... And I'm wondering if that's part of the like, decision to pull out a little like bit. Like they try, too. they try to be like, "Look, we're going to stick with live live press conference, but we're also going to add a treehouse aspect." And they failed at both. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think they said, "Well, we invested so much in that, and everyone hated it, so we just won't do it." Mm-hmm. And that's fine. I'm I'm cool with that. They're still going to do live press conference. Like PSX has a live press conference, so they're still going to have it. There's not an E3, so I think the big thing for EA, they're just worried about clout. It's all clout. Right. How long? How long has this? Uh, idea or thought downward process trend. of downward trend since been nintendo happening. started doing digital okay um and how many years has that been uh last time they did a live one was wii u before the wii u came out so 2012 oh geez okay so, so a while it's been five okay. years i was gonna say Seven i was years. God, it's been a while. i'm just wondering if it was starting you know kind of these picking up steam because of the you know again with not, not that microsoft pulled out but they kind of 
pulled out. They Microsoft, separated themselves a little Microsoft's bit. Microsoft's biggest issue with theirs has always been lack of exclusive games. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been Microsoft's biggest bugaboo every single year is they have a lot of impressive third-party games showed off, but there's nothing exclusive. Right. Uh, and that was why they bought so many studios last year. So it's one right. of those things that they should have a better showing this year just because they have more studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they'll show some of those games, probably teased for the next Xbox, but... Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I, you, you can't help the image of E3 if Microsoft not again, not pulling out, but kind of separating themselves out a little bit. I understand the move, I do. And then Sony completely not well, being there. Well, Microsoft. This year. Okay, the original reason that Microsoft took their booth and put it in their own building wasn't even a money thing; it was space. Mm-hmm. There wasn't space, enough which is space. weird because they were weren't they in the other hall, the opposite hall of Nintendo? And but they didn't want to be. You know, were, I mean, yeah, but if you're going to be here, here, here's their viewpoint. If you're going to be in the other, you want to be in the main hall. If you're going to be in the other hall, right? Which don't get me wrong, there is some cool stuff in the other hall. Oh, yeah, a lot yeah. of the third party, a lot of like we saw a lot of the big third parties are in that hall. Yeah. Perfectly worth going to. Yeah, but if you're Microsoft and you're not in the same hall as Sony and Nintendo. What's the why? Point? Why not just have a whole building to yourself? It's yeah. pretty much the same walk between the halls as it is to walk to their. <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I mean, it's not. I mean, it, it's it, a little it's bit shorter, it's, but it's shorter to, to stay the in halls, the convention but, center. It, it, but yeah. it, it's still, it's like Microsoft said, "Look, we want a giant space. There's not room in in there to have a third well, giant space. So we're just we're just <laughs> going to, you know, we're just, we're just going to move it to our own place." They mm-hmm. still. Here's the thing, though. The, e, ESA doesn't seem worried about that. Like we're making this, video, like they 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 don't care. They're making money off right. of it, right? So, but the, but the, but the but the aesthetics of it. I don't think the aesthetics of it matter. It's close enough to like everything. You gotta remember, like there's on this E3 live, the whole down, like a whole mm-hmm. event. Like mm-hmm. they basically, for those who don't know, everyone thinks E3 is a convention center. It's like a seven block radius. Oh God, is it's everything nuts. E3. Ads everywhere. It's nuts. E three live outdoor things happening, and like this isn't even called EA Play, which is in a completely different area. Not even. Oh, that's near. in Hollywood. Yeah, like not even, not even near. So like, all like it, it's crazy. So like the Microsoft thing has its own like little district, and it's it all fits together. So I don't really think yes, it cares about that because they already own. They just said, oh, we get to own even mm-hmm. more area. Mm-hmm. Sweet, let's do it. Yeah, but. Because that just gives them more air to sell ads and sell mm-hmm. this and so like it's fine. I don't think think the ESA cares. I think it is their their primary concern is is the relevancy of E3 being the conference, right? That every gamer feels basically being gamers Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's their word because. You you talked about how like there's all these other press conferences or all these other events that the games could come at you know three different packs maybe four someday this isn't counting if they ever open one in Europe. Right. Um, I don't know that that so I I think personally uh, I think packs packs is a huge deal but it's just U S so right um they're just like I guess you can call them like mini or, or I was gonna say mini E threes but probably more like like a Comic Con that blew up. Mm-hmm. I, I think because mm-hmm. like PAX isn't just video games, so that's like the thing to remember about PAX is like E3's distinction is we are electronic entertainment video games. Mm-hmm. Like you could be oh electronic entertainment, you could argue that's digital. You can argue it's movies and comics. That's fine, but guess what? It's just video games. Right. So that is their like PAX is everything. Video game, video game, video facility. Right. There's other Tokyo Game Show. Mm-hmm. Or. Is it not Tokyo Game Show? Tokyo, whatever it's called. They have their thing. Gamescom is yep. now huge. Yep. And now they're having press conferences there, too. Mm-hmm. So, like... It, E3 isn't the only kid on the block anymore, is yeah, what Gamescom I'm saying. Gamescom didn't exist, like, a decade ago, I don't think. Um, and if it did, it, it wasn't much much before that. Um, you know, the Tokyo Game game thing's been around for a while. Tokyo Game Show's been around for a long while, but... Um, you know that was I, I guess I never really worried about that because that was kind of like on the other side of the world. So it's right. It's, it's how much effect huge, does it have? on You know, E3? it's not a huge deal, and there's a lot of Japanese only games, and heck, right. Nintendo doesn't even go there. You know, they just have meetings. It's weird, right? Nintendo doesn't go to you know, no. Sure, Nintendo does not attend Tokyo Game Show. They just why have, not? They do. They do meetings with companies behind closed doors there, but they they do not have booths or anything. Like it's really weird. But I don't know why. It, it probably pr- goes back to some dispute at some point, but um, 
yeah, I, I honestly think that I, – here's the thing. I don't think as a person who attends E3 that there's anything wrong. No. But as the outside looking in, there's a lot of you guys out there that have told me that E3 is, is worse than it's ever been and this and that. And I'm just like, maybe I'm tainted because I go now. So mm-hmm. I honestly – because I didn't go 10 years ago. Right. It could it have been, been way more amazing. Better. Yeah. I don't know. All I know is I go now, and I think it's it's overwhelming how how much crazy, amazing stuff there is to oh, do. Oh, I know, right? Um, it's always it's always fun to go. And this and is just like one. It's cool just to walk around. Oh yeah, like, for sure. See what's neat. new. I mean, and what's that's different. true of any major convention, but it, yeah. it is cool just to walk around. But like you, legit, you know, in the past could just bump into Reggie randomly walking around. Yeah. You theoretically, it has happened. We haven't had it happen yet, but others have bumped well, into Miyamoto. We've come this close to. Actually, getting to go play Breath of the Wild with Reggie, we were standing in the line, and Tim Schaefer just stopped like t- like four feet from us the yeah, other day. Right. Was just talking on the phone, yeah. and I'm just like, "Sure, why not?" Like you got like E3 is, is crazy, like because here's the thing, at, at other shows, like big developers, like they can't walk around the floor, they'll get mobbed. Mm-hmm. But at E3, it's like this understanding, even if it's media and gamers, that hey, you can say hi, yeah, but they're here to work, right. So like, yeah. if Reggie's walking around. Don't don't feel bad to say hey Reggie, but like don't think he's gonna stop for you. Right. Don't get offended if he doesn't stop right. for you. Tim Schafer, he doesn't stop. Like it's fine. Um. So it's it's one of those things that 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 to me as someone who attends is something that is uniquely E three is everyone's together and everyone's an understanding of what this is, mm-hmm. and it is a chance to meet YouTube celebrities. It is a chance yeah. to meet. Um, I mean, I ran into Bob Wolf. <laughs> yeah, Bob Wolf, Wolf that baby. Wolf that. Woo! Um, so, like, it is a chance to meet a bunch of people uh, that you normally want, but it's also there's no not going to be mobbing people. Like, um, if PewDiePie, for example, wanted wanted to go or whatever, yeah. and, and with their biggest YouTuber in the world, but even with him there, it would be understood. Don't, Generally, don't, you say hi. I mean, we you want, can say hi. I say mean, what's up? But like, he's there to work. We, Everyone's there to work. Everyone's there to enjoy games. These people are not the show. It's cool that like, you bump into Angry Joe. Yeah, I, was gonna, I was just gonna say the first year we were there, we were within five feet of Angry Joe, and you could say hi. But like, it's right. understood that like, yeah. hey, you know, we're all here doing something. Like, yeah. they're on their way to something. You're on your way to something. Right. Like, say hi. You know, whatever. Maybe maybe exchange, get a handshake. Maybe, maybe exchange maybe. a business card. Yeah. You know, whatever. And if he has time to chit chat, maybe he'll chit chat. Yeah. Or if he recognizes you from something you do. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's just one of those things where it's kind of understood that like there isn't there isn't that mentality where I've heard in the past like Boogie two nine eight eight. You know, going to like VidCon and like he has to go around back corridors and this and mm-hmm. that. Like, you can't go out in the middle of the floor. Mm-hmm. It causes chaos. Yeah. But that's not the case at E three. Yeah, I mean, you get you, you can tell if somebody's around because the volume gets a little bit louder. Well, sure. And everybody starts clamoring and whispering and, oh, my God, look at it, look who it is. Look but, it is. but that's I mean, all but, it is, though. Yeah, but that all, yeah, you're it's right. It's not a, oh, that's all, like, and I will say one thing they do that's really cool is is you hate it sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yet they have the security. They have lots of security. Yes, they do. And they're just like, keep moving. Yep. And that, that yeah. helps as well. It's kind of like, yeah. hey, look, like, hey, say hi, but you guys better keep walking. Like, right. You know, you're not right. going to stuff up traffic and prevent people from getting the stuff. Um, they're a little stickler about some things, but whatever. Like, I can't blame them. There's, yeah. you know, 70,000 people coming into and the I mean, damn building. It, so. We were in the line for Overcooked 2 last year, and all of a sudden we turn around and there's the 10K. Yeah. And, and, and uh, what, his, the person that he, I can't remember her name. Oh, Evelyn? Um, yeah, the person that he does his stuff with. It's just like, oh hey, how's it going? And then and yeah, I said, I was it you or me? I said hi. I can't no, remember. you. Well, you did because yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize. Yeah, them. I, I recognize. I don't know like, Wait a second. You're like, like they're literally right next to me, and they're yeah. just standing there. I'm like, what are you yeah. not doing or anything? I, I'm waiting. Or they're both. Hey, we're all waiting. What's in up? We're just chatting. I mean, I recognize you guys, and actually, they've recognized you too. I think well, if they, I remember they, a little bit. They did, They weren't sure at first. They're like, maybe. And then uh, then they're like, look, oh Nintendo Prime. That sounds familiar. Like right. Nintendo Prime sounds familiar, but because I had never communicated with them before. Right, so, right, right. So it, it wouldn't be. They like were this aware year. Like of if, you. Like if we bump into Super Metal like, Dave again, or like they, right. they know us, yeah. like Bob, right. whatever. Yeah. Well, of course they're gonna say. Yeah. We know all these people. We yeah. talked to them. Um, but 
it, it's it, it's just it's a very fun event that way. That's why to me when people tell me oh E three is like for me it's always been about the trade show. Even when I was just a gaming fan, press conferences are great. Get hype, yeah. get awesome. But like, oh, yeah. dude, ever since Nintendo started live streaming, as just someone sitting at home, I'm like guys. E3 Christmas is now three straight days. It's right. not just right. a 45 minutes on a Tuesday. It's three <laughs> straight days. Right. And we still have press conferences that start on Sunday. So it's like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's Christmas. It is. Like, to me, it's it even is. more it exciting. Is. It is. In fact, there's so many streams now of so much stuff. Yeah. That, like, when I was at home just enjoying E3, mm-hmm. I would have my TV on back when they used to put it on TV. On G4 or whatever Well, that's it was probably on. another reason why it's going down the hill. Back on G4. It's not on TV. Back on G4. Yep. Anyways, um, but I'd, ha- I'd have their their thing up. Uh, and then you would then you would have, like, the IGN stream up and the GameSpot yeah. stream. And now Twitch and YouTube, YouTube Gaming. Yeah. You would have all these different streams up. I would have legitimately, like, 18 different streams running at once. Yeah. Of all... Because I'm just like, okay, which one's talking about something I care about? Right, one? right, right. Yes, yes, this one's, oh, crap, this one's talking about two. Hit record. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> right, like, right. And it's still like, it's even worse now. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, to me, uh, to me, it's like, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong. I'm still like, E3 is amazing. Yeah. But I get it because I think the ESA knows that without, you know, with companies – basically not revealing hardware anymore that's a huge loss mm-hmm. compared to mm-hmm. you always knew the new hardware will always be unveiled always You're, always 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 nope not now a major 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 game may not be announced at e3 though too no yeah. with, with patch popping three, up heck bayonetta 3 was i mean granted you can argue how major that is but bayonetta 3 was announced at, at the game awards i mean uh, borderlands 3 again still not announced For, at, <sighs> at, at e3 it you know yeah. that's a big game so there's a, there's a lot of things to consider um I don't know. I'm, I'm, curious. Curious. Like, I'm actually curious what your guys' idea is. That's exactly like, what I was thinking. Well, actually, first off, tell me what you guys think is wrong with E3. Yep. And then if what, something wrong. what you think can be done to fix it. Because I don't know. I, I come from the perspective of I'm basically media, and I love it. And I don't And maybe that's And maybe that's the thing. I, I, I'm biased. I don't know. Like, I've been covering E3 for so long. I don't find myself any less excited for it than yeah. before. And I know I attend now, so I guess that's a whole new level of excitement. But it's... Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I mean, guys, do you, do you know how many videos we made off of E3 last year? Actually, quite a bit. <laughs> like, well, we mean we vlogged every day. Well, we have the daily vlogs and the gameplay and the hands-on impressions. Those are all guaranteed yep. stuff we're going to do again. Yep. And like, holy I mean, crud, there were so many games. Yeah. We didn't even get to them all. My fault because of the badge. Because we and, didn't get, uh, we didn't get to go into that one part of the Sega booth where they had Valkyrie Chronicles Four. Um, oh yeah stuff like that. so we yeah it's my bad that we did not actually get gameplay and hands-on of everything we, we were well, that no. that close we would have if i didn't screw it up we would have got that done and we would have had time to go to microsoft but i yeah not this year yeah not this year right badge right. check before we badge leave check before we leave every check like, <laughs> every every check. check every check bad check yeah <laughs> um anyway maybe it's one of those things that we just wear our badges coming out of the hotel instead <laughs> just, of just go to throwing sleep them in the trunk go to sleep in anyway. <laughs> no i'm not putting anything no, in the car no in that's LA. well that no no because when we transport our stuff we threw everything in the trunk so we never i mean we just assumed that it was in the bag that's why i think when we when we just grabbed our bags, oh, I, I don't, know I don't think we don't. I brought everything in back to the hotel. Every no, time. I, don't know I, I know, but in the morning when we grabbed our bags to walk out the door, we I, were I thinking the put, pass was in the bag. No, I never put the pass in the bag. Well, then that's there's your problem. Why would I put the pass in the bag? Because you you know you're gonna grab the bag to go out the door. So, so then you know you have your pass. I didn't forget my pass. I, never, I put mine in my bag. I didn't forget my pass. <laughs> I'm just going to sleep in the thing. There you go. There you, just never take it off. Never take it off. Just go swimming in it. Go to do everything in it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just got to wear, I'm going to down the whole time so I can yeah. like undo it and then kind of go behind the yeah. badge and yeah. rebutton it so it's still sticking out. <laughs> oh, boy. On that, if sure. That's what's wrong with E3. Better, wait, wait. Do I shave or not shave? Because if I don't shave, it could just glue to the hair, and then I can right. snip the hair off. Uh, or, or, oh, there, that's the punishment. <laughs> <laughs> a waxing punishment. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. 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 A chest wax. And it had to be the full chest. You can't just leave them with one strip. 
Well, can you? <laughs> I mean, with how much it hurts. <laughs> but still, I mean, come on. I don't know. I'll, t- I'll, I'll yeah. tell you what. If yeah, I yeah. lost and it was a wax thing, you're doing the whole thing. I'm just <laughs> got the man up. <laughs> because I ain't letting you just rip one strip and just leave it as a big red streak across my chest. And I have. Uh, oh, still, come on. That's that's the that's why it's a punishment. It'll still look hilarious. It'll all be on camera. Yeah. Uh, no. Fine. You're right. The rest I do for my pleasure. Ah. <laughs> You do it once a month. Hey. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. Please do not suggest that. As <laughs> well, you this can suggest it. doesn't mean that it's going to happen. This will be the year I lost. Yeah, right. This will be the year I lose. Right. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out at Patreon, patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime for $5 per month. You get uh, one day early access to the audio version of the podcast. For $10 a month, you get to watch us record the podcast live. Uh, for twenty dollars a month, you actually get a chance to be on a podcast episode once per month. Otherwise, man, you could find it on Podbean, on iTunes, on NintendoPrime.net, on the Google the new Play stuff. Revamped. Well, it's not really revamped. Fully revamped. Fully revamped. It, it, it's it's coming. It's a thing. Technically, if you go there right now, you can't watch any of the podcast episodes. So that's a thing. And Eric's just finding out about this now and going to be pretty. Actually, yeah. Now that I think about it, you're the right. Vi- the videos aren't up because they were in a specific video thing on that layout. And that doesn't exist anymore. So now you got to manually put the videos in there. So technically, you cannot watch every single episode of Nintendo Prime.net. There is nowhere to watch every single episode of the Nintendo Prime podcast currently. But it will be it will be Nintendo Prime.net eventually when Eric decides to get around to putting the old the old videos back up. And this is where I also mentioned to Eric: if you want the thumbnails to look great for him, they all have to be a thousand by by four hundred now, instead of the nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Just ripping the thumbnail out. Now you got to resize. Ah, and it sucks for me too because I have to resize too, whenever I put up. Um, post. yeah. If you want it to look, look good, if you don't care about how it looks, and you know I'll do it. I know he it, it, he will. You just dodge it in batches. It's just like an, yeah. just like programming. Just batch yeah. it up. Yeah, it's pretty right. much. I mean, once you get in a flow, it's it's super easy. But, yeah. Um, it's when you start getting to like, okay, 50 episodes in, when does this end? Yeah, right. It doesn't. It doesn't. It this is the song. song that that okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys yeah. for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode.